I knew that branding was going to be important for what I wanted to do. So my biggest struggle in life ever was being a teenage mom. Everybody thought I wasn't going to make it. Now you can really make yourself look however you want and get a bunch of followers and people will pay you. You're listening to The Radcast. If it's radical, we cover it. Here's your host, Ryan Alford. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the latest edition of the Radcast. I'm Ryan Offord, your host. I'm excited for an interesting journey today with Heidi Cortez. What's up, Heidi? Hey, what's up? Uh, thanks for having me, Ryan. Hey, my pleasure. I um entrepreneur now. You've written best-selling book, coach, branding <laughs> expert. It always catches my attention owning an ad agency. So. Uh, <laughs> We, uh, I, I'm excited to kind of get into your journey and things like that. Uh, how's life treating you? We'll start there. <laughs> Good. Um, couldn't be better out here in LA. Uh, loving life a lot. Nice day. It's like 80 degrees today. So, um, yeah, everything's going great on this end. How about you? It's good. It's been, uh, you know, it's South Carolina's good. We're not 80 degrees, but, uh, you know, I'm a week away from headed to uh, Turks and Caicos for a week. Ah. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm uh, halfway on island time already. So uh, <laughs> nice, <laughs> awesome. I know. <laughs> but uh cool. Well, let's uh let's start down your path, Heidi. You know, we like to bring this, you know, through the lens of business marketing journeys and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um I know you've had uh you know, interweaving paths and multiple businesses now, uh but let's give everybody the Heidi, you know, I guess condensed. I always say this, the Heidi, you know, anyone's story, I guess, could be two hours long. Uh, but, uh, you know, let's give the uh, kind of that career journey for you. Well, I've always been an entrepreneur since I was a child. Um, I started doing businesses at 12. By 13, I was lying about my age to get jobs because when you're 13, you can't really, you can't get a work license or a business license and when I was 13, I used my sister's birth certificate and social security card to get a job and pretend that I was her. And I got a job at Ross, Ross Dress for Less. Her name's Courtney. So I had a name tag that said Courtney. I was working the registers during the holiday season for like $4.75 an hour. And I was so happy to have that job because we were really poor growing up. I was very underprivileged, grew up with a single mom, older sister, younger brother, and we were loved a lot, but we didn't, we didn't have any money. We, you know, grew up on like eating beans all the time and lentils. And if we wanted to, um, you know, have nicer things in life or clothes or things like that, my mom really encouraged us to get a job. So my mom knew what I was doing about uh, using my sister's birth certificate and social security card and getting a job at Ross. And I held down the job for several months until my sister got mad at me and called them and told them that I was her little sister who stole her wallet. <laughs> but she she was such a business person and entrepreneur, too, that she was charging me every week to use her name. So um, but anyways, <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of how the journey started. And um, when uh, after high school, my family was supportive of me not going to college and really going the entrepreneur route. And um, I opened up a tanning salon in my early 20s, and um, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Um, I ended up being on a television show on the E! channel called Sunset Tan, and that helped skyrocket my tanning salon success. So I was always really, you know, in, into business and um, the passion of it. And now, you know, I, I own other businesses, but it, it, it's been a very long interesting journey for sure. It sounds like you did embrace uh, personal branding for a pretty early age. I did. So um, I knew that branding was going to be important uh, for what I wanted to do. So somebody had to recognize me. How, how was I going to stand out from everybody else? So I really became, you know, I, I, started, I started writing I told um, funny, short, sexy stories. I sent my stories in a bright pink manila envelope when I was, I, I believe I was like 19, to the Howard Stern Show. And this is when um, he was on regular FM radio. They had 
20 million listeners a day, I pretty much thought, okay, they're never going to see this bright manila envelope with my stories in. But that was my marketing technique then, you know? So I sent them this, um, I sent them my stories and they actually received it. And I would hear them talk about my stories and play the stories on their radio show. And I thought, wow, that's so cool. Like they're, they're talking about my stories or whatever. And then later, um, I actually called the Stern show and again, never thought somebody would answer. I called and they picked up on the first try and they said Stern show. And I said, you guys are talking about me, you know, and they're like, oh, come out. So it actually opened up doors back then. It was, um, a very short lived experience, but I was able to, well, one, my marketing techniques were working for me at 19. And two, I was able to get my name out there. So um, after that, then I just went on to um, use my leverage and start opening up, opening up more and more businesses and teaching people along the way what I was doing and coaching and mentoring and things like that. Do you feel like, you know, obviously it helped, but have you felt like you've had to like just overcome that perception? Because Howard's just so crazy. And I mean, like, yeah. and I don't think it was anything that salacious, but it's just just the nature of his show. Have you felt like you've had to just kind of like put it behind you or have you embraced it as, hey, it puts you on the map and mm-hmm. it allowed you to have a broader voice to more people and do more maybe of where, you know, ultimately your career headed. I don't know how you reflect on it now. Well, I think I would be in the same place if it wasn't for the show, Um, but I'm very grateful for the opportunity and the favor that I got from the Stern Show. Um, You know, they were very nice to me. And, um, you know, I I guess, like I said, it was very short lived. I had a contract with Sirius Radio for six months and um, yeah, I got my name on the map, but uh, I mean, it was so long ago. I mean, this is like... 2005 or like... Yeah, like 17 (laughs) years ago. Exactly. So this is so long ago. So... You know, I was I was so excited and eager to do all these things in life. I mean, if you saw my list of what I wanted to do at 20, I mean, it was just like thousands of different things. So the Stern Show was such a small part of my life to me. What makes where does this entrepreneurial drive come from? Like, you know, I know you talked about the early age and doing it, Mm -hmm. but like you feel like it's like innate. I mean, it sounds like you're born that way on some level, but. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, I don't know. What does that, what what generates that? I think a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, my mom's support of like, like allowing me to get jobs early. And no matter what I told my mom, I wanted to do when I was a kid, she was like, Heidi, that's a great idea. Heidi, you should do that. And, um, she never said no. She never said you can't do this. And we, like I said, we were so like we were so broke and I was so underprivileged that I would dream about how I can be successful or how could I provide for my family someday. So I think that for me is where my drive comes from, but I couldn't think of it any other way. Um, This is definitely my passion and to be relatable to other people that maybe have upbringings like me. Um, I grew up in a very conservative family and um, you know, I, I I chose a different route. I was not, I was not a traditional, um, you know, by the books person and I didn't want to go to college and, and my family was very supportive the whole way through. Yeah. That's great. And that always helps. You know, I think uh, Mm -hmm. some, some aren't as sad as it is, you know, it's almost like they are part of, I don't know, the negativity. You know, I don't, I, I, I talk to a lot of people when we go down this path and the ones that have support always amaze me on one level. And then the ones that don't have support, it, it's, it baffles the mind. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, no, I agree. I'm, I'm very fortunate. What, um, let's talk about, you know, the last few years and, you know, what you've been up to. You know, like you got several initiatives and it's going on. Um, so talk about the here and the now in the last few years. So, um, one of my biggest projects that I'm working on right now is the $3 marketing club. And that started in the pandemic. Um, my partner and I, we wanted to think of a way that we could 
help entrepreneurs and small businesses that were struggling financially and a way to help them keep their businesses in the difficult time that we were all going through. So we created the $3 Marketing Club, which is online modules teaching small businesses and entrepreneurs how to do their own marketing. And um, you and I both have marketing agencies. And so there are times when people need to hire out because you're overloaded and you can't do everything yourself and you need that expertise and that help. But what we do is we kind of get, we get everybody started. So if somebody doesn't know how to run their social media, we tell them how to do it in the shortest amount of time. So for $3 a month, they get one um, course per month on different niches and different, uh, or different marketing niches, I should say. So Instagram marketing, copywriting, um, email marketing, SEO, Everything you could possibly think of, we teach this course. So it really is $3 a month. And when we started the $3 Marketing Club, um, I was so excited for it. I didn't think I was going to have any backlash, but the backlash ended up being people contacting me and saying, great, it's $3 this month. How much does it cost next month? I said, oh, it's $3. And they're like, well, what about the month after? I'm like, yeah, it's $3. It's $3 forever. And uh, I think people thought that we were, um, it was too good to be true, you know, that we were going to charge them like $3.99 the next month or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what you I'm working do, on. You can't even do a good deed anymore, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I know. No, nobody's like, wait a minute, what is she up to? Yeah, so... Um, that is something that I'm very passionate about now. And um, recently I just started a new clothing boutique for female entrepreneurs and hustlers called Posh Boss LA. And um, when I was growing up very underprivileged, we didn't have money to buy clothes. So every year when we got money to get school clothes, I would go to thrift stores and buy all these clothes there and cut them up and sew them, whatever I had to do to make them fashionable. And um, it really weighed on my mind as I got older and, and recently more so um, about wanting to provide awesome, cool clothes that I wear that I could provide for other female entrepreneurs that maybe didn't have a large budget because a lot of entrepreneurs, as I'm sure you know, there's a lot of highs and lows. You're not always high. Sometimes you might get a big check and that might have to last you a really long time. So Posh Boss LA is really affordable clothing. Um, you know, a lot of our items on there are $20, $29. And actually, um, my top right now is Posh Boss LA. So it's clothes that, that I wear and that I believe in. And I believe in the mission. Um, we collect donations from our fans or buyers and um, we give $250 gift cards to female entrepreneurs that are in need of new work clothes. Oh, well, that's awesome. I uh, Thank you. That's, um, hey, a nice top. I mean, you know, you <laughs> thank look, you so you look, much. You look great. The, <laughs> thank uh, you. The, uh, a couple things there, you know, you've two very different channels there with $3 Marketing mm -hmm. Club strikes me as a brilliant, I know, I know it's for a good reason. So, and I, and I, believe that uh but it's a brilliant play for you know maybe sparking clients that might need more help so i give you a lot of credit there for that but Thank you. i would love to know like you know what's been what's been like a struggle i mean you know entrepreneur to entrepreneur mm -hmm. like what's been your biggest struggle uh running businesses and you know like where have you feel like you've grown the most i mean kind of kind of a two part two part message there Okay. Um, so first of all, my biggest struggle in life ever was being a teenage mom. My son <laughs> is now a 22 army veteran and, um, everybody thought I wasn't going to make it. They're like, how are you going to do this? But I was a 20 or I was an 18 year old single mom and I pulled it off. I can't believe it. I moved down to LA with my son, just he and I, and we didn't know anybody. And I, I pulled it off. I can't believe I made it happen. But that was by far the biggest struggle. Um, I've never been married, uh, so I've never been divorced. And I've just done everything on my own. And I think when people find that out and they're like, well, um, you know, maybe she had help or financial backing and that wasn't my case. And so when they find out that I was also a young single mom, it makes it more um relatable and people can understand that that is a huge um, struggle to go through by yourself. So that, to answer your question, is my biggest struggle, was my biggest struggle. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, uh, 
And it is amazing how, and I don't know if you've gone through this like discovery process, but like prob I'm sure in your twenties, you it's not that you were in any way, you know, not proud, but like now it seems like there's more of an acceptance and you realize as you get older, I've learned this myself, like telling these stories and explaining that journey is so much more relatable than trying to like power through it and act like it didn't happen or something. I don't know if you've experienced that. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I've always lived a pretty private life and um, my son and I, you know, we liked our privacy and um, there was no reason to, try and put him in the limelight or, you know, people asking him questions or attacking him or whatever. So, um, uh, you know, I've always been very proud to be a mom and I, I feel like I beat the system because a lot of women my age, including a lot of my friends, they, they want to have babies so bad. And they're like, Oh, I, I don't know. Like, am I going to have one? I, I first I need a partner or whatever. And I'm like, Oh yeah, Mike, I, I already have one. I'm very blessed. And people tell me all the time now, like how lucky I am. And I, I say, well, that's funny because nobody told me I was lucky at 18, exactly. but I do feel like I beat the system. I, I wouldn't have changed it at all. How's it been running the companies? Like what are, what are your everyday challenges? And like, you know, how have you kind of dealt with those, you know, growing multiple businesses now? Um, well, I think uh, for me, because most of the time I'm able to work from home, that the pandemic didn't affect me the way that it may have affected other people. So I was um, very fortunate in that situation that I was able to work from home. Yep. Um, but I would say that, you know, the biggest challenges are, um, you know, one, gaining trust with a $3 marketing club. And even though it's $3, people need to trust us that we're not going to upcharge them later. And even when you check out, we don't even have any up sales. It's just really, <laughs> it's three bucks. So um, that's my biggest challenge currently. And as far as um, Posh Boss LA goes, I would say, you know, sometimes getting the inventory on time or getting it to um, the customer, you know, you're always worried about mail or is there going to be shipping delays or something like that. And even though you can't control those shipping delays, someone may come back to you and say, hey, why is my product not here? So I would say that that is um, challenge, challenges that I'm going through. How's the, I mean, is this response? So, I mean, it sounds like then usually when I ask someone that started e-commerce, it's kind of mm -hmm. the challenge is like getting the motor going, like getting mm -hmm. sales through the door and all that. And I'm sure I'm not saying that you've, I don't know, maybe you have figured it all out, but it sounds like it's more distribution, like fulfilling the demand you already have. Yeah, we're definitely doing sales. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm new to this. So I created Posh Boss LA. I designed the entire website myself. I found all of these vendors and the clothes and bought all these samples. And it was something for me that I felt God was telling me to do solo, that I was not to take on partners or investors. I was just supposed to do this myself. So I did. And then after I created the website, um, I knew that I needed more professional help on the actual process about people checking out and how to maximize um, what I was doing. So I did hire a team of experts to rebuild what I did and, um, that helped a lot, but we're very early. It's only been a few months. So um, ask me again in a few more months and let's see what happens. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What, uh, where does, um, where do you gain, I mean, who are your influences now? Like, you know, like where do you go for inspiration? And I don't know, what, what, what keeps Heidi happy? You know, I don't know. This might sound so cheesy, but my mom, she is like <laughs> the sweetest, like, I mean, she's like the sweetest angel that ever lived. My mother is my inspiration. And I just think about how she was so loving and so supporting. And, you know, I, I thought everybody's parents were like that. And when I got older and I realized that everybody else wasn't. So my mom, you know, she's um, my inspiration. I live for my mother. And I live for my son. And, um, you know, those are people that, that I love and I aspire to be like. Any, uh, any books? Are you a big reader? Are you, uh, like, where do you get your knowledge from? 
<laughs> you know what? I have ADHD and dyslexia. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I've even, I'm even working on my fifth book right now is a miracle, Ryan. Um, but no, I, I don't have books that I recommend to other people. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not a huge reader and um, I don't watch TV either. I just flip through the internet. I have the most speedy Gonzalez fingers on the West side. I just <laughs> flip flipping through the internet so fast because I get bored of things really fast. So um, I get all of my knowledge from YouTube, uh, people like yourself, Instagram. And um, sometimes you see a post that's very inspiring or motivating and you don't even remember who posted it, you know, or it's one of those share pages like, an entrepreneur page or something like that. So that is where all of my knowledge comes from is, is other mentors, my business partner. He's, he's very knowledgeable and great, but, um, him and the, the internet. (laughs) Oh yes. That's everyone's best friend. I, it's amazing how how many, how many people like will text me something. It's funny. Like, you know, cause I'm, you know, being in the field I am, like, I, I guess I'm a source of knowledge on some levels and some of you will text me and I'm like, did you just try Google? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's amazing how much information's out there. But I yeah, think, I love Google. Yeah, exactly. What's um? I mean, so are you doing coaching now? Do you do? I thought I may have saw like some one-on-one coaching. I don't know if you are into that or not. Um, and you know, kind of your approaches are in that. Yeah, I do do coaching. Um, doing coaching started off with another uh, business that I own called the Model Advisor, and um. Uh, we do a lot of coaching and mentoring for aspiring models and models and aspiring models, parents. So that's actually how it started. And then, um, more people started reaching out to me for business advice, social media advice. So I do, um, coaching and mentoring on that as well, but the model advisor, um, I wanted to help people understand how the industry worked because people get ripped off on the modeling industry all the time, they get scammed. And so um, I thought that I would create a business where it could be a safe haven for aspiring models and models. And um, that's it, so it's the modeladvisor.com and um, we charge $7.99 a month where people can write me and get um, mentoring and coaching from me. That's cool. Is um, Thank you. What's your, what's your thoughts, you know, the landscape of modeling and, you know, it seems like it's trying to get more inclusive. It's not, I don't know. It seems like it's improved, but you know, I'm speaking from a hundred thousand feet, not being in that field, but I don't know. It seems like the, I don't know, the culture of things has gotten a little better, but I I know there's still probably some nastiness around it. Yeah. There's always going to be nastiness around modeling. And um, I think that, there's a lot more opportunities than there used to be in the 80s or 90s. In the 80s and 90s, um, you really did have to be very attractive and everything was about lighting. There wasn't Photoshop. There wasn't the internet where you could just find yourself a job. Now you can really make yourself look however you want and get a bunch of followers and people will pay you um, to promote their product. So I feel like there's a lot of opportunities in the modeling industry now. But, um, you know, I always advise to my clients that you should not just model. You've got to have something else. So um, I actually used to manage models as well. And those models, I'm I'm like, you got to do something else because you can't just model. And so it doesn't matter if you're an artist, you're a basketball player or a pool player. I don't care what it is. Just do something else so you can stand out because I get hundreds of emails from people a week saying, oh, I want to be a model. It's my lifelong dream. Please help me. And I'm like, trash, trash, trash. No, I would, I'd rather hear, um, hey, I'm a, you know, professional swimmer and I'm thinking about modeling. That's more attracted, attractive to me um, to see someone else wanting to do something else than just try to, you know, hope that someone's going to call you from a modeling agency because it doesn't work that way. (laughs) It does seem like there needs to be more substance these days. And I think, Mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, building a foundation around, I don't know, whether it's a skill set or a knowledge base. And then, uh, you know, some amount of attraction, I mean, certainly helps. But like, 
it just seems like the longevity of that feels like the right advice that people need to be hearing. Yeah, I mean, um, I think that, you know, to, to be a model, it doesn't matter if you're attractive, quote unquote, attractive or not. I mean, really, there's modeling jobs for everybody. So, right. yeah. Well, I just meant the, the more important part being an attractive, I kind of put in air quotes, <laughs> the uh, whoever that is. But I think building a base of expertise that's not just, you know, what color your hair is or what what magazine you belong in, right? Yeah. <laughs> is, yeah, uh, no, I agree. Is, uh, what is, you know, I always like to, you know, wrap up towards the end, like asking people what their brand is. Like, what's the height, how do you define and what, what do you want to be like remembered for as far as the Heidi Cortez brand? Um, I want to be remembered for, I guess, never giving up, right? And um, doing everything that I've ever wanted to do. So I have a bunch of failed businesses, but nobody hears about them um, because, you know, but we have to, it's it's life experience and it teaches me something. So, you know, I want to be remembered for never giving up and and being a hustler and a go-getter. Um, I, I think that more people should try. They're scared and they're scared of failing. So if they weren't scared of the failing part, maybe they would do more. And um, hopefully they choose to do that like I have. Cool. Do you have uh, a minute? We do a section called rad or fad. I give you a keyword and okay. you tell me if it's rad, which is good, you're great, okay, yeah. radical, <laughs> or fad as in uh, may not be here very long. Okay. <laughs> All right. First one, social selling, selling on social media. Uh, rad. Yeah. Yeah. I start easy. They get harder. Yeah. Okay. NFTs. <laughs> Ooh. Um, I'm going to say rad. I think they're here to stay. Um, I, I like digital stuff. Digital's not going anywhere. Cool. The metaverse. <laughs> Oof, man, you are giving me tough ones. <laughs> you know, I've I've actually been talking about this recently to friends about this metaverse. Um, I I, I do think it's going to be around and it's going to be um, updated and upgraded. It's kind of just like how Facebook started in the beginning. It's completely changed since then. But I'm going to say rad. I'm I'm thinking it's going to stay a while. All right, I think you got. I think you have good senses. I think you're uh, <laughs> practical, but you've got good sense. Uh, <laughs> yeah, practical. <laughs> <laughs> practical wisdom uh heidi i really appreciate you coming on the show um i think you know you've got a story that could be relatable to a lot of people and i think you got a lot to be proud of and i really appreciate you coming on thank you and likewise for yourself uh congratulations on all you're doing and i really appreciate you inviting me on today i had a great time so thank you ryan it was so nice to meet you and um hopefully where can everybody can keep up with you though let's give everybody where they can oh. find your stuff well my instagram is at heidi cortez and um actually all of my social medias are at heidi cortez so you can find me there or heidi cortez.com also has links to all my other stuff Awesome, awesome. HeidiCortez.com. Hey, guys, you know where to find us. We're at theradcast.com. Search for Heidi Cortez. You'll find all the highlight clips from today. Search for Ryan Offer on all the social platforms. You'll see me there. We'll see you next time on the Radcast. Cool, Heidi. That was great. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. So does this was this live or no? I don't not, know. Yeah, not live. We, um, oh, okay. Yeah, we're about six to eight weeks out typically oh okay yeah all right it's gonna forward. be a while yeah just be probably march some mid-march yeah okay great well, we'll i'm we, sure you we email all the highlight like we do a really nice content package so you'll have little highlight clips from it you'll have the full episode audio and video and of course you know we distribute on probably 50 platforms now between audio and video um so that will all happen on our end but we'll my team zoe will send you kind of a link to all the content and stuff and you can use on stories or social media or anything like that. We certainly co-promotion always helps no matter what. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I look forward to it. Con then, content that I don't have to drum up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, that's, I'm glad you said that. You'd be surprised. Like, you know, we give it to people and it's like, they don't know. Cause like, even if they're like celebrities or no matter how big or small they are, we're like, 
this is so you don't have to create anything. Like they don't, I don't think they don't use it on purpose, but they just don't know to. So it's like, use yeah, it. When I, when I saw your um, press package, I, I was stoked. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> They're going to do this for me. So I, I immediately thought it was awesome. That's cool. Um, if you don't mind, really quick, we always do this at the end as part of our thing. Um, we just like, we're, how was your experience on the Radcast? I mean, were you, was it good? We like to just kind of get like a, a quick take. Yes, it was rad. <laughs> I mean, Sweet. the rad cast is rad. I had a great time. Thank you for having me. It's been great. You're very lovable, awesome, and it's always nice to talk to other entrepreneurs. Awesome. Thanks so much, Heidi. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks, you too. Take care. Take care.